once you know once you have a goal of where exactly you're going feel those intense emotions that are evoked within you because if it's something you truly want you're gonna know based on your vibration and that vibration is going to attract all of the resources for you to accomplish that goal welcome to magical moments i'm your host aura vibin if you're on a healing journey and you're interested in self-improvement, shadow work, spiritual secrets, and how to make every moment a little more magical, then you're exactly where you're meant to be. Hello, magical people. Welcome back to Magical Moments. I'm so excited to have you here. It is currently midnight because I have tried recording this podcast so many times, but my cats kept making so much noise. <laughs> It's okay. You know what they say, when you're in the process of manifestation, you will be tested to see if you stop. And your girl didn't stop. We are here. We are recording this podcast. So today we are getting into seven keys of manifestation. The seven keys are number one, the law of assumption. You've probably heard this before. We'll get deeper into it, but basically it's kind of like the law of attraction, except you're assuming that you are already the person that has everything that you've attracted. Number two is being an open channel to receive. Love this one. We'll dive deeper into it. Number three, you have to have this desire for impact. Number four, you must have a goal, some sort of GPS, an end destination, if you will. Number five, having an elevated emotion attached to that goal. Elevated emotion and elevated intention. Number six, taking inspired action. And number seven, detachment from the outcome, gratitude for the journey. First, I also wanna say like, who am I to be teaching you about manifestation? What are my credentials for this? Am I living my dream life? What have I manifested so far? Who the F am I to be talking to you about manifestation? Have I manifested my dream life? Yes, the answer is yes. I am living my dream life. The only thing I would change about my life is the location. I would rather live somewhere hotter like Florida or California. We're working on that. And you can always have more abundance. But the foundation of what I have, I have everything. I have everything I need. I have so much abundance. I am living with a beautiful partner. Okay, my I just wanna, I need to say this. My Scorpio moon is screaming right now because I have a really hard time being vulnerable. I don't like telling people my personal life. And if you know anything about astrology, you know that where your Scorpio is in your chart is what you should keep private. And of course, my Scorpio is my fourth house. So everything that's related to home feels very private to me. But you guys are my besties, my magical besties. So I'm sharing my inner life with you. I have a beautiful partner that I have been with for about nine years. If you want to know the synastry between us, I'm a Capricorn. He's an Aquarius. I'm a Scorpio moon. He's a Virgo moon. So water and earth moons. And he's a Pisces rising, water rising. And I'm a Leo rising. So the synastry is there. It is good. And we have gone through major ups and downs. If you're on a healing journey, you know how vital it is to have a partner to bounce your shadows back and forth to you. Being on a healing journey with a partner just accelerates your growth like crazy. So I am living my dream life with my best friend. We have had, like I said, our ups and downs. We've gone through it. We were high school sweethearts, broke up for a little bit, and now we're back together. So I also have two beautiful cats who I consider my spirit guides, and I am living in this crazy condo that I manifested for such a small price, but it's so beautiful. It's on the top floor, and we don't have any like bad neighbors it's a beautiful building beautiful courtyard two balconies nobody lives above me which is what i really wanted and this is just such a beautiful condo like i can't believe that i manifested this place when i tell people i live close to what i'm paying they're like what (laughs) what how do you live there that's crazy so definitely something i manifested i have a job a beautiful job that supports my dreams i have a job working as a hostess at an event center and And this event center allows me to watch all of the concerts. I get to see all of the concerts of like every huge musician ever. I've seen Usher, I've seen Lady Gaga. I literally name a person, I've probably seen them. I saw Rihanna, that was amazing. I didn't see Beyonce though. So yeah, I get to work at a job that encourages me in my dream chasing, which is to be a singer songwriter. That is what I am. 
I am manifesting it. I also manifested a super close friend who has his own studio and lets me record at his freaking studio for a super affordable price. That is another manifestation. Like that is wild. It's a five minute drive for me. I can go when I want. He's a blessing. This relationship that I have with this person is definitely a faded relationship. It feels like destiny. He's magical. We manifested each other. So I'm super connected and like have networks. And I also manifested a freaking contract with these people who are going to create five songs professionally with videos and everything as soon as I give them five singles. So I'm working, I'm hustling, I'm doing my thing, I'm attracting. Yeah, this is another personal one. I really wanted knowledge. I wanted this higher knowledge, this esoteric wisdom that through my spiritual awakening, I received. So I feel like I received the key of life. Cue the unk, but I truly did. I know so much about the um, illusions of the world. I know so much about right and wrong, objective truth. I'm so grateful for that knowledge. It feels like I can be at peace now that I know it. Now that we're moving into the age of Aquarius as well, I feel this truth will be opened up to the public in due time. And also I feel like I'll feel more comfortable sharing this truth with people as humanity continues to awaken because I do have a deep-seated fear of sharing this truth. I do believe that I was burned at the stake in past lives as many of my fellow witches were because of the truth that I spoke. So in this life, I know exactly what I need to say. I know exactly what I need to keep to myself for my own safety. And yeah, I think that we're gonna be a lot more conscious moving forward as a species, so that fear will slowly subside. I also have a birthmark in my eye, and if you know anything about the spiritual meaning of birthmarks, birthmarks in the eyes symbolize being assassinated in a past life, and that does resonate with me, so that's interesting. Finally, the most amazing manifestation to date is my beautifully, insanely cosmic community on TikTok of close to 400,000 followers. I'm so grateful for every single soul. This community has like, kept me sane in these spiritual times where you can't really share your ideas and knowledge with random people on the streets. I probably would have been quiet and silent about my journey thus far if it weren't for spiritual TikTok and like all of the people who have connected with me and who have gone through similar things as me. So I'm so grateful for like fellow light workers that reach out to me and just share their truths. I feel so deeply connected to that platform and those people and it's one of my favorite manifestations. So the keys that we're getting into, let's talk about the law of assumption. The law of assumption is defined as a way to create anything you desire by assuming the feeling of your wish that it has already been fulfilled. Okay, this is a universal law. It means that you are living in the reality that externally doesn't actually reflect the desired reality, but internally, you're already living it. You need to act like it. You need to act like you've already got everything you want. Look, I'm a freaking professional YouTuber. I'm a professional podcaster with millions and millions of views, and I'm fucking acting like it. Law of assumption. You need to also reprogram your subconscious mind so that you take actions like this so that you show up you set up the camera and you start talking the only reason i'm doing this right now is because subconsciously i believe i'm already it so take action like that dress like it okay i want to dress like a crystal witch goddess because that's what i am a master of energy so what is your desired reality and how does the person dress are they like a super huge ceo of this like magazine editorial company okay how would you dress would you dress like a business woman with your Chanel bag and your Gucci shoes? What do you want and how can you dress to match that reality? Also feel it. What do you want your life to feel like? I want to wake up and have freedom the whole day long. I love that feeling. The feeling that I can wake up at whatever time I want, hence me recording this at midnight, because I know that tomorrow I can wake up whatever time I want. It is a new blank slate for me every single day. That's the life I want. So how do you want your life to feel? I want my life to feel like freedom. Write it out, write like key words. What do you want your life to feel like? Freedom, joy, movement, like whatever comes to your mind, just like free write the words of how you want your life to feel. That's a great exercise. Also have gratitude for the life that you're building. There's gonna be another episode on this, which will be called Lack Versus Abundance Mindset. Don't have feelings of lack or try not to because the minute that you have lack around something, the creator's not gonna gift you more. You're gonna have to learn the lesson of 
wow, like I'm so grateful for the food in my fridge currently, even if there's not a lot, because somehow, some way, you will end up getting more food if you're grateful for what you have. So look around and look at all of the beautiful things that you already have. The fact that we have fingers that we can move by just thinking a thought and then our fingers move. Like it starts there. It starts at the smallest, tiniest things. And then you can like be grateful for the, this abundance. Like look at this huge ring light that I have. Look at this beautiful Canon camera I'm recording on. This podcast gear it came over time I have thousands of dollars of equipment for recording but it's because I was grateful to get a tiny little $12 microphone for TikTok like it starts with these little tiny manifestations and then it just grows and grows and grows until you're you look back and you're like wow I manifested it all gratitude law of assumption number two being an open channel to receive oof I need to talk about this one this I can truly talk about because I have been on the opposite end end where I was not an open channel to receiving. So if you guys don't know, it's been about a month now that I just quit my nine to five job and I took on that job for the matrix lessons. I knew going into that job that I had things to learn. The biggest lesson was my worth and how I was a vibrational match to all those people there who were driven by money and driven by the paycheck. That's exactly what I needed at the time. And so my reality showed me people who were needing the same thing. I, for six months, was not an open channel to receiving my blessings. I was going through my own shadows and I was filling up my days with eight hours of work where I could not let my mind run free and get intuitive hits and intuitive downloads, psychic activity, messages from source. I was a community manager. I had to manage 80 students, do inventory, manage apartments. This was like a very heavy mercurial job. I was always in my mind, always thinking, always texting students, talking to managers management about problems going on. There was no time for me to be like, hey, that would be a great idea for a YouTube channel because I had no time to think. So being an open channel and leaving space in your life for things to manifest, it is so important for manifestation. Things cannot come through if you're busy and your day is full of distractions. So you might be like, well, I need a job. How am I gonna pay the bills if I don't work all day? Try a job that is more creative or try a job where you go in and you communicate with people because communicating pe with people is also a way to channel. So now that I work as a hostess for an event center, all I do is I speak to people. I'm still channeling. I don't have to remember things. I don't have to remember key documents and go to management and talk about a bunch of different problems that I remember from two weeks ago. Like when your mind is full like that, you are building a career. Like I could have gone down that route as a community manager and built that career, but that's not at all what I want. It wasn't in alignment with me. And so ask yourself if the actions you're taking on a day to day are in line with your soul, because if they're not, that's that is a form of selling your soul. If you are going to a place to just get a paycheck and you hate your life and you hate the events that are taking place every single day, you're selling your soul for money and it's not a great look for anyone. This doesn't only apply to career, this also applies to relationships. So if you're trying to manifest a boyfriend or a girlfriend, but you already have one, <laughs> you're sending a confusing message to the universe. However, if you're trying to manifest another partner and you're already in a relationship, but you define your current relationship as open and polygamous relationship, then you're telling the universe exactly what you want. You're saying, I'm currently in a relationship. However, I'm open to other experiences. Once the universe, once God, the creator knows this, they will send you people who are also open, people who are okay with your relationship dynamic. All of a sudden you get experiences with several people because it's exactly what you asked for. And of course, if you don't have very much time in your day and you still want to be an open channel, a great idea is to meditate. This is where you can create space for information to come through. You're not constantly consuming social media, literally just taking 20 minutes in your day, which I'm sure you have, everyone has, especially if you prioritize, you will gain so much clarity. You'll be able to watch what you've been thinking about. Meditation is such a key to manifestation. Number three, having a desire for impact. I was just listening to a Kabbalah episode the other week called the Weekly Energy Boost. Anyways, they were talking about having a desire for impact. They said, who do you think God is going to give a million dollars to? 
the person who uses the million dollars and throws it on their bed and uses that million dollars as a bed of money and they just absorb the money and they just use it for themselves? Do you think the creator is gonna give that money to that person? The creator is going to give that money and that abundance to someone who wants to create a large impact, to someone who has a mission, an idea. Abundance is rewarded to people who create empires in service to humanity. Who will be the most impactful channel for source to work through them? Everyone is an expression of the creator. And the creator is constantly evolving. So abundance will be given to the person who is constantly evolving and growing out of their comfort zone. So it's just something to keep in mind. If you are pursuing a goal or money is the goal. What are you going to do with that money just to have more? How can that money impact more than just your life to go beyond you? How can it flow through you into your friends and then your family and then strangers? Number four, having a goal in mind. You cannot get anywhere without a GPS. You need to know the destination, but not make the destination the end goal. Make it the journey. It's important to have smaller goals to work towards that goal. Because let's say that you wanna start on social media, you wanna grow an audience, and you make a goal of, I want a million followers on this platform. If you're starting that high, you will always miss the mark and you won't feel fulfilled and excited because you're aiming so high, but you're not appreciating the journey. So start with a thousand followers, start with 5,000 followers, start with 10,000, and then watch as you grow, watch your excitement grow along with you. Because let's say that you put the 1 million followers as a mark and then overnight you manifest 500,000. Will you be excited if that 500,000 stays at that number for a year? No, you probably won't appreciate it. You'll be like, damn, like I manifested half a million, but I'm still not at a million. Like, and then you are losing that gratitude, which is taking you away and more towards lack. So everything is intertwined. Have a goal in mind. Don't necessarily need need to reach it to have fun. Just know where you're going so that you're at least on the right path so that you have your arrow aimed in the direction that you want. And then the goal is to just have fun shooting the arrows, trying to get to the target and then have an elevated emotion attached to that goal. So once you know, once you have a goal of where exactly you're going, feel those intense emotions that are evoked within you because if it's something you truly want, you're gonna know based on your vibration. And that vibration is going to attract all of the resources for you to accomplish that goal. It's absolute magic. If you want a fun life, you need to live a fun life right now, having a heightened emotion and charging your fucking actions with this beautiful energy. This is where intention comes in handy and where your vibration plays a huge role. So let's just say that I have an intention to be a huge author. Okay, I'm an intellectual. I'm trying to attract book deals, speak to the public, share my knowledge, absorb new information. I better be doing those things on a daily. I better be feeling the emotions associated with being an author on the daily because that's how your external reality will end up being attracted to what you're currently in. Let me give you a perfect example. So I had a meeting with a psychic three days ago and I told her about my goals and how I want to do many things, podcasting, astrology, and tarot singing, etc. And she said, focus on singing because that's where you'll get the highest excitement. And I was like, you're so right. That is where I feel the most fulfilled. She also said it's where I'll find the most abundance. So I was like, oh, that's cool. After that meeting, I had some random person on Instagram send me their song and ask me to be a feature on it. So random. But once I decided, you know what, I'm going to go for music. I had the external reality insert evidence as to my own inner intention. So I set an intention that excited me. I said, I'm going to go for music and then all of a sudden some girl sends me a beautiful song that I probably will feature on because it's a beautiful song about awakening and it's spiritual and it's everything that I'm in alignment with. I do want to say a little note on manifesting with negative intention or negative emotion. Let's say that you want to lose weight and you're manifesting being skinny and this manifestation is coming from a place of insecurity or it's coming from a place of hate for your body. This is how you manifest in a negative way. You could still accomplish your goal of being skinny, but it won't be through heightened, elevated emotions and it definitely will not be in the highest vibration because the intention, the starting point, wasn't the highest vibration. It came from a low negative outlook look and perception. You might manifest being ill, getting sick, having a stomach worm that ends up taking you out for two weeks 
where you're not able to eat food. Yeah, you lost all the weight that you intended. You wanted to lose 10 pounds. You lost the weight, but did you have fun on that journey? Because the journey is everything. Did you have fun during that two weeks of being bedridden because you could not eat because of the stomach worm. So be very intentional about why you want what you want. Where is this coming from? Is it coming from a good place? Is it coming for a love for, for yourself? A desire to grow, to change your life, to awaken humanity, to create long form content that lives on beyond myself? That's what I want. So intention is very, very important. And What's even more important is when things fail, if you had a negative intention to start with, you're gonna feel really, really bad about yourself. So if I was starting this YouTube channel and I had negative intentions to take people's money and then I create a video that doesn't do well and people start attacking me, I will have a lot more self-hate because my intention wasn't in the good place to begin with. However, if my intention is to truly awaken humanity and I create a video that doesn't do well and the public hates me for it, I can at least sleep at night knowing that I came from a good, pure hearted place. And if the public doesn't receive that, that's on them, right? So intention is so important. And then having good freaking emotions that's connected to that intention is everything. Now, number six, taking inspired action. Taking inspired action, what does this mean? Inspired action feels like a strong inner urge to do something, like something higher is calling you to fulfill a purpose of some sort. It's a gut feeling. You feel this desire in your body. It's pulling you and the idea and vision is moving you as opposed to you moving the vision. Yes, they're kind of hand in hand, but when a vision is pulling you, you know that you're being a channel for divine information. And there's kind of like this pressure that's taken off. As opposed to you forcing yourself to do something, oftentimes that comes from ego and it's not inspired action. You're like, oh, there's like another motivation behind it. There's an ulterior motive. It's probably coming from wanting to increase some sort of ego vanity metrics, whether that be followers, whether that be like validation, etc. So inspired action really feels like it's you and your and your buddy God. It's you and your buddy the creator. It's you and your spirit guides and you're like, let's fucking do this. Let's fucking awaken humanity. Let's move forward in some way on a soul level. It has to come from your soul. The next thing, the last one, the seventh key of the manifestation, my darlings, is detachment from the outcome. Gratitude for the journey. So I don't know if you guys listen to Russ, but he's super inspiring. I absolutely love him as a musician and just as a human being. I bought his book and literally read it in one sitting in like two hours. Beautiful book. His mind is beautiful. He speaks about how the journey is everything. That's what his tour is currently called. Why is the journey everything? Because the destination is an illusion. Quite literally, what's coming to my mind is I'm I'm in a desert, I'm seeing a mirage and I keep walking towards the mirage and it keeps getting further and further and further. I have water, I have my friends with me and we're having a good time. I don't need water, I'm not hallucinating, I'm just literally looking at that mirage. So now imagine being with your friends and looking at that mirage and then not enjoying what your friends are saying, not enjoying the conversations that are happening. Oh, maybe a camel comes by and then everyone else is like petting the camel and being like, hey, look at this. That's part of the journey, right? But you're just so focused on the mirage. You're like, no, we got to go there. We got to go there. The mirage is an illusion. You didn't get to pet the camel (laughs) because you were so focused on the illusion. That's what the journey is like. It's like so many things are going to come up in the desert. So many things are going to come up in your life. And if you're not 100% present for them, you're going to miss them to the illusion that doesn't even exist, which is the end. The end is death. The end is the other side. So make sure that every single moment you are here and you are appreciating what life has to offer you. And that's kind of what life is all about. It's being present. It's thinking about how you can live fully right now. Present because all is the only thing we have is right now. The power of now. Read that. And so that is why it's so important to detach from the outcome because in presence, we have the highest, most purest form of energy. And if you want to master this reality, you need to know how to master energy. If you're always focused on the end goal, you're not mastering energy. You're you're losing yourself to your mind. You're losing yourself to your ego and you're losing yourself to an illusion. Mastering presence is mastering energy. There's this beautiful, beautiful saying that if you are truly giving from your heart, the outcome or the reward 
doesn't matter because the gift is in the process. So right now, let's say that I create this podcast and one person listens to it. Thank you to this one person. Thank you so much for listening. However, I'm having so much fun recording this for myself right now that this is the reward. Everything else is extra. Everything else is a cherry on top. I'm having so much fun using my voice and getting it ready for podcasts because like I said, I have a Taurus midheaven. My goal is to use my voice as a muscle to get stronger in my voice. And so just doing this is me fulfilling my purpose. So detach from the outcome, have gratitude for your journey, master the present moment, and you will be a master of manifestation. We are all masters of our realities. We all have the ability to make every single moment so magical. And there's there's so much abundance for all of us. So you can start this today. You can literally just start being more present. You can start accepting your dream life as already happening right now. Be an open channel to receive. Have that desire for impact. Have a goal. Know where you're going. Have these elevated high vibrational emotions that are attached to that goal. Take your inspired action and of course, detach from the outcome. And I think this is a beautiful manifestation sandwich. I will see you on the next podcast. Bye.